Hello, Bobcats. This is Mrs. Wilhite, fifth grade math. We're actually going to be starting chapter three today. We are in lesson one. We're going to start with relating division to multiplication. You can see it is a fifth grade standard, something you're required to know in fifth grade. I'm hoping at the end of today's lesson that you'll be able to relate division to multiplication. Remember, relate means what they share or something they have in common. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see some commonalities between division and multiplication. Here's that question. Why, Ms. White? What's the main idea? Why are we learning this today? Well, one, it is a fifth grade standard. You have to learn it in fifth grade to be ready for the grades that are coming your way in the future. But also, I think it will help you with efficiency. Efficiency being how fast you can solve a problem. Being able to see how division and multiplication are connected will help you solve problems much quicker by seeing those connections easily. Before we get into today's lesson, I want you to think, what do you already know about a fact family? Well, something I realize a family can be defined in different ways, but a fact family in math are numbers that are connected, so they're part of a family. So an example would be if you're looking at 12. There's lots of ways to get 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12. Okay, I'm going to start with 3 times 4 equals 12. These three numbers are all part of a family. They're part of a fact family. And so that means that they're related. Here's an example of what else I know about a fact family. I can say 4 times 3 is 12, right? That commutative property, it doesn't matter the order. I can also see that division, 12 divided by 3, if I put 12 into 3 equal groups, I will get 4. I also know that if I take 12 and I put them in groups of 4, there will be 3 in each of those groups. So from my experience, I know that a fact family are numbers that are all related numbers that are connected. All right, as we look at problems today and we're relating division to multiplication, I want you to think about these steps. Step number one, think about the fact family. Think about how the numbers are related, whether through multiplication or division, but think about that family. Step two, you're gonna use the family to solve. And finally, that last step, of course, is it reasonable? Whatever you get for your answer, does it make sense? So one, think about the fact family, all the numbers in that family. Then use those numbers to solve the problem. And of course, go back and think, does it make sense? All right, math in my world, example number one. And of course, we're going to use a fact family. Cheryl is helping to put away 18 basketballs after practice. She places them on a rack that has three shelves. How many basketballs can she put on each shelf? Well, here's my question. How many can fit on one of the shelves? Well, I know that division and multiplication are related. And I know multiplication a little bit better than division, you might be thinking. So you can think 3 times something is 18. Well, 3 times 6 is 18. Or commutative property, 6 times 3 is 18. So the fact family of 18 that we're using now is 6, 3, and 18. So I'm thinking about that fact family. I'm going to use those to help me solve the problem. 18 divided by 6 is 3. And 18 divided by 3 is 6. So now if I look back at the question, they're asking how many basketballs can she put on each shelf? Remember, it says that she has three shelves. So we're taking 18 and we're dividing those 18 basketballs into three equal groups or three shelves. So 18 divided by three is six. Cheryl can put six of those basketballs on each shelf. It makes sense because 6 plus 6 plus 6, or those three shelves of 6, would equal 18. I know that I have the right answer. Math in my world, example 2. Ellie is creating gift bags for her party guests. She wants to divide 56 pencils equally among 7 gift bags. How many pencils will go in each bag? 
So how many can she fit in those seven bags? Well, I can let P represent the number of pencils in each bag. I need to figure out how many pencils are in those bags. So I have 56 total pencils divided into seven groups or seven bags. I can use the relationship of multiplication and division of the fact family. Hmm, I'm going to think about the family. What number times 7 is 56? Well, I know 7 times 8 is 56, or 8 times 7 is 56. I can also think about it the opposite. 56 divided by 7 is 8. Since P is the number of pencils, I know that Ellie will put 8 pencils in each bag. I can check my answer. So 8 times 7 is 56. So I know I have the right answer. I can go ahead and move on. Moving into guided practice, complete the fact family for 8, 9, and 72. Okay, so my fact family is for the number 72. And I know that 8 times 9 is 72, or 9 times 8 is 72. So I can go ahead and put 8 times 9 to fill in my chart is 72, or 9 times 8, that commutative property. I also know that 72 divided by 8 is 9. See how all three of the fact family are being used. 72 divided by 9 is 8. By knowing the fact family of 72, you can see that it will help you because you can use multiplication to help you solve division or you could use division to help you with the multiplication. They're all connected. I'm still in guided practice. This time it says divide, use a related multiplication fact. Sometimes knowing your multiplication facts can help you solve division because it's all a family. So 48 divided by some number is 6. So I can think about that family. And I know that I can get 48 through multiplication. Some number times 6 will equal 48. Well, I know that 6 times 8 is 48. So that must mean that 48 divided by 8 will give me 6. I theorize the answer is 8. And I know that it's reasonable because 8 times 6 does equal 48. Moving on to problem number 3. This time we're looking at the fact family of 40. And let's see, well I know 40 is 5 times 8. So I can go ahead and fill 8 in here. By thinking about that fact family, it's helping me. 5 times 8 is 40. So that must mean that 40 divided by 5 is 8. And I know that I have the right answer because if I put 40 into five equal groups, there will be eight in each group. That fact family helped me solve this problem. Independent practice. Write a fact family for each set. Okay, well I need to figure out what is the fact family describing? What is my total? How many am I talking about? And if I look at the paper clips, I have three three groups of something. One, two, three, four, five. So I have three groups of five. So three times five is 15. There's 15 paper clips. I can also write it as five times three is 15. And remember the inverse is division. So part of that fact family is division. So if I start with 15, I can see that if I put 15 into three equal groups, that gives five in each group. Or you can think about the fact family being 15 divided by five groups would give you three. So three, five, and 15 are all part of a family. I know it's reasonable because you can see up here that it makes sense. I can move on. All right, I'm still in independent practice. Write a fact family for each set. Again, I'm trying to figure out what number I'm writing the fact family for. And I can see that there's 8 in this column, and there's 8 in this column. So we are talking about the number 16. So the fact family of 16, well, 16 is equal to two groups of 8. I can see in the picture that I have 1, 
2 and each group has 8. You can also write it as 8 times 2 equals 16. Now remember the inverse, the opposite of multiplication and part of the fact family could be division. So if I'm taking 16 and I'm dividing it into two equal groups, just like shown here, that's going to leave me with 8 in each group. If I took 16 and divided it into 8 groups, then each of those 8 groups would only have 2. I know it's reasonable because we're talking about the fact family of 16, and all four of these equations show that they're all connected in that fact family. All right, independent practice. Write a fact family for each set. Problem number six. Four, nine, and 36, they're all part of a family. We need to figure out how they're connected or we need to show that they are connected in fact. So if I start with 36, I know there's some ways that I can get 36 or get a total of 36. Four times nine is 36. And I can also write it as nine times four equals 36. Now we got to think division. How do we make division? Well, if I have 36 total pieces and I put those 36 into four equal groups, then each group would get nine. Or again, if I start with 36 and this time I put 36 into nine equal groups, then each of those groups will have four. It's reasonable because all those numbers are part of the fact family. They're all connected. We can use multiplication and division to help us if we see the relationship between the two. Okay, now in the problem number seven, we have 35. And what are some ways to get 35? Well, I know that seven times five is equal to 35, or if I add seven five times, you can also write it as five times seven will give you 35. Again, for the fact family, we know that multiplication and division are connected. How can I make 35 by dividing? Well, 35 divided by seven is five. And 35 divided into five groups would put seven in each group. Again, it's reasonable because multiplication and division are connected. Divide. Write the related multiplication fact. So 64 divided by 8. If I take 64 and I put it into 8 equal groups, what goes in each group? Well, I know 8 times 8 is 64, so that must mean that 64 divided by 8 is 8. Problem 10. 45 divided into 9 equal groups. How many are going to go in each group? Well, I know 9 times so if I have nine groups of five, that will give me 45. I concluded the answer is eight and five. I know it's reasonable because of the multiplication fact family. Eight times eight is 64 and five times nine is 45. So I use that to help me solve the problem. Okay, I'm still in independent practice. Skipped over to number 13. We're still dividing and we're going to write the related multiplication fact. So 40. 40 divided by some number is 8. Well, I know that 8 times 5 is 40, so that must mean that 40 divided by 5, or putting 40 into 5 groups, would give me 8 in each group. 63 divided by some number is 7. 7 times something is 63. Well, I know 7 times 9 is 63. So 63 put into 9 equal groups or divided in by 9 well, is 7 in each group. It's reasonable because the multiplication and division fact family, they're all connected. Moving into problem solving, again, we're still working with relating division and multiplication to help us solve. Orange blossoms have five petals and are some of the most fragrant flowers. How many petals would there be in a group of seven flowers? Okay, well, I have seven flowers, and each of those flowers have five petals. So... 
I think there's going to be 35 petals in each in all of those flowers. You can also think of it as 35 divided by 7 will give you the 5 petals in each of the flowers. Or if I have 35 total petals put into 5 groups, then that's 7. But I concluded the answer is how many petals would there be in a group of 7 flowers? Well, there'll be 35 petals. This is reasonable because if there's seven flowers and each of those have five, seven times five is 35. I know I have the right answer. Okay, we're now on problem 19. We're still talking about orange blossoms and they have five petals. How many petals would there be in a group of 11 flowers? Write an equation to find the unknown and then find it. Okay, so how many would there be in a group of 11? So I have 11 flowers and all of those flowers have five petals each. And if I multiply 11 times five, I should figure out how many petals there are. Well, I know 11 times five is 55. I determine the answer is 55 petals. I want to make sure I label my answer. I know it's reasonable because 11 times 5 is 55. Or 55 divided by 11 would be 5 petals on each. It makes sense that I have the right answer. I can check it with that fact family. Okay, we're moving on to problem 22. Which one does not belong? Circle the equation that does not belong with the other three. Explain why it does not belong. Okay, well I'm looking for anything that looks wrong, that shouldn't be there, is not connected. Well, they're using fact families. And I have to think about how can I make 54? Because 54 is represented in three of the equations, I'm guessing that 54 is the fact family. Well, 54 divided by 9 is 6. 54 divided by 6 is 9. 6 times 9 is 54. I'm going to circle this equation as the one that does not belong. Explain why it does not belong. Well, it's reasonable because 9 times 3, which equals 27, has nothing to do with 54. And the other three equations all are dealing with the fact family of 54. So I know that's the one that does not belong. All right, Bobcats, it's that time. What did you learn today? Well, in summary, today I learned that numbers are connected. There's a family of numbers that are relating multiplication and division. I also learned today that if I know my multiplication facts, that will help me with division. Or if I know division really well, it will help me solve a multiplication problem. So as you start working on your independent work, think about the family. Think about how multiplication and division are related, and that will help you today. Thank you for your attention.